Okay, guys. Now, let's continue with the calcium as secondary secondary messenger. So, which hormones are going to use calcium as a secondary messenger? See, wherever you see calcium as a secondary messenger, or the hormones which are using calcium as a secondary messenger is involved mainly in two types of actions, physiological actions. First, this calcium is involved in contraction, okay, smooth muscle contraction and constriction. Okay, so wherever you see calcium, it will cause contraction or constriction. First of all, what is this contraction? Which contraction? Contraction of uterus. Okay. Uterine contraction. Now, just think guys by yourself, what is that hormone which is causing the contraction of uterus? Which hormone contracts the uterus? Oxytocin. Okay, oxytocin causes uterine contractions. Now just tell me, what is the secondary messenger involved in contractions? Calcium. So, oxytocin uses calcium for uterine contractions. So, what is the secondary messenger used by the oxytocin? It is the calcium. Not CAMP, not CGMP. It's a calcium which is used as a secondary messenger by oxytocin. Now, let's see what are the hormones which are using this calcium for constriction. Here, constriction means which constriction? Vasoconstriction. Okay, vasoconstriction. Now, could you able to recall what are the hormones which are involved in vasoconstriction? One such hormone is vasopressin. In the name itself, it's there. See, it's a vasopressin. It's a pressing the blood vessels. It's causing constriction of blood vessels. Okay. Guys, don't confuse. Previously, we have discussed that antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin is acting on G protein coupled receptor on collecting ducts. For water reabsorption, see for water reabsorption, the receptor involved is G protein coupled receptor and the secondary messenger involved is CAMP. That's a total different place. Here right now I am discussing, yes, vasopressin is also involved in vasoconstriction. Here the receptor involved is totally different. Here the receptor involved is V1 receptor and the secondary messenger involved is calcium. Okay. So, remember, whenever someone comes to you and asks you, antidiuretic hormone is using which type of secondary messenger? It depends on where the antidiuretic hormone is acting. If antidiuretic hormone is acting on the principal cells for water reabsorption, there the receptor used is V2 receptor and the secondary messenger produced inside the cell is CAMP. And the aquaporin 2 channels are produced, water reabsorption has happened. Here, on the blood vessels, on the smooth muscle cells, there is V1 receptor. When this antidiuretic hormone or vasopressin, when it comes and acts on the V1 receptor, then what's happening here? Calcium is getting produced. Yes, V1 receptor is also a type of G protein coupled receptor. But inside it's having GQ component. Okay, not alpha stimulatory or G stimulatory. Here, there is GQ. Now, this V1 whenever it's stimulated, Calcium, ultimately the IP3 and DH, inositol triphosphate and diacylglycerol are going to be produced inside the cell. That increases the calcium influx into the cell. Now this calcium we know, it causes contraction of the smooth muscles. When the smooth muscles around a blood vessel, whenever they are contracted, that will cause vasoconstriction. Here also contraction only. Here also smooth muscles are getting contracted. That contraction is causing constriction of the blood vessels. So vasoconstriction is happening. So. Anywhere, wherever you see vasoconstriction, there calcium is used as a secondary messenger. So, vasopressin is one hormone. The other type of hormones are 
endothelin endothelin is also causing vasoconstriction endothelin is also using calcium as a secondary messenger the third hormone is angio tensin 2 we all know angiotensin 2 also causes vasoconstriction and nor epi nephrine nor epinephrine if it acts on alpha 1 receptors on the surface of blood vessels we all know there are alpha 1 receptors alpha 1 receptors are a type of g protein coupled receptors now this alpha 1 receptors inside they are having which component gq component will be there so whenever you stimulate the alpha 1 receptors now the gq component will be activated uh, gq component will be activated the gq component will activate phospholipases phospholipases will help in production of ip3 and dag this ip3 and dag will helps in calcium influx into the cell the calcium influx into the smooth muscle cells will cause constriction of the blood vessels vasoconstriction so these are the different hormones which are using calcium as a secondary messenger or ip3 dag system as a secondary messenger just remember what are they oxytocin uses calcium as a secondary messenger endothelin angiotensin 2 norepinephrine and vasopressin by acting on the b1 receptors are also using calcium calcium as a secondary messenger okay guys we have discussed about calcium as a secondary messenger now after this let's see the other types of cell surface receptors first we have discussed about the g protein coupled receptor now after this now sorry now in this g protein coupled receptors we have seen camp as a secondary messenger in the previous video now here we have seen calcium as a secondary messenger now let's see cgmp okay c g e m p as a secondary messenger okay now what the cgmp will do cgmp whenever it's produced inside the cell it causes relaxation or dilation nothing but relaxation of smooth muscles it causes relaxation of smooth muscles that causes vasodilation so whenever you increase cgmp levels inside the cell that causes relaxation okay now what are the hormones which you need to know what are the hormones which are increasing the cgmp levels inside the cell one important hormone which you need to know for your entire life is that nitric oxide okay now nitric oxide it acts on its receptor whenever nitric oxide is acting on the receptor inside the cell inside the smooth muscle cell what is happening CM, cgmp levels are elevated now this cgmp as a secondary messenger it will causes vasodilation now other hormones like atrial natriuretic peptide anp atrial natriuretic peptide bnp and cnp these are different types of natriuretic peptide atrial natriuretic peptide brain natriuretic peptide and cnp these are these natriuretic peptides are also going to use cgmp as their secondary messengers so we have seen three different types of secondary messengers let's sum it up first is camp now camp is used as a secondary messenger by those hormones involved in metabolism like glucagon and those hormones involved in water reabsorption like anti diuretic hormone and those hormones which are use are those hormones which are involved in electrolyte secretion like secretin so secretin glucagon and anti diuretic hormone increases the camp levels inside the cell camp is, is being used as a secondary messenger now second type of secondary messenger is calcium calcium is involved in two types of physiological actions first is contraction and second is constriction so contraction is done by oxytocin contraction uterine contractions are brought by oxytocin so oxytocin by acting on its receptor increases the calcium inside the cell so that calcium causes contraction of the uterus in the same way the hormones like endothelin angiotensin 2 norepinephrine anti diuretic hormone or vasopressin by acting on v1 receptors will also increase the calcium inside the cell that calcium is used as a secondary messenger that calcium will causes contraction of the smooth muscles leading to constriction of blood vessels 
and the third type of secondary messenger is CGMP. Wherever the CGMP is there or whenever the CGMP levels are elevated inside the cell, it will cause relaxation of smooth muscles that will cause dilation of the blood vessels. Okay, relaxation of smooth muscles around the blood vessel will cause vasodilation. What are the hormones, uh, what are the hormones increasing the CGMP levels inside the, inside the cell? One is nitric oxide. The second type of hormones are atrial natriuretic peptide, brain natriuretic peptide, etc. Okay, now after discussing about the three different types of secondary messengers, now let's move on with the different types of receptors. See, G protein coupled receptor completed. G protein coupled receptor is using different types of secondary messengers completed. The topic is completed. Now, the second type of receptors which we have studied are serine kinase receptors. Okay, and just I just want to remind you what are the other type of receptors tyrosine. Kinase receptor and the fourth type is Janus kinase receptor. Okay, now let's see one by one. Guys, let's start with the tyrosine kinase receptor. This is very important after G protein coupled receptors. Tyrosine kinase receptors are used by which type of hormones? The hormones involved in growth. The hormones whose physiological action is growth and differentiation. Okay, so these hormones will use tyrosine kinase receptor and the example of those hormones are insulin. Okay, a very very important MCQ which you should never forget. Insulin acts on which type of receptors? G protein coupled receptors, tyrosine kinase receptors, Jack, uh, Janus kinase receptors, serine kinase receptors, etc. It acts on tyrosine kinase receptor. Okay, insulin and growth factors. Like platelet derived growth factor, PDGF are acting on the tyrosine kinase receptors. Now, let's talk about Janus kinase receptors. Whenever, see this Janus kinase receptor is also a cell surface receptor. Okay, it's not an intracellular receptor, it's a cell surface receptor. Which type of hormones are acting on the Janus kinase receptor? Whenever you activate this Janus kinase receptor on a cell, inside the cell it will activate a pathway called a STAT pathway. Okay, signal transduction and activation of transcription. So, we usually call it as the JAK stat pathway. Now, what are the hormones using this Janus kinase receptors? The Janus kinase receptors are used by three important group of hormones which include growth hormone prolactin and erythropoietin okay so these are the erythropoietin is usually involved in production of RBCs right so these are the hormones which are using Janus kinase receptors for their action now the last group of receptor which we are left with is serine kinase receptors serine kinase receptors is involved in repro Induction, okay, in the actions of reproduction. So, serine kinase receptors are used by which type of hormones? Hormones like activin. Okay, activin increases the FSH levels. Now, this activin, this is follicle stimulating hormone, is something involved in the reproduction only, right? So, activin acts on serine kinase receptor, increases the FSH levels. The second type of hormone is known as anti-Mullerian hormone. Now this anti-Mullerian hormone is also using which type of receptor? Serine kinase receptors. So just have a sum up. Tyrosine kinase receptors. Okay, it's a type of receptor where inside the tyrosine kinase enzyme is linked. Okay, there is no G protein. 
टायरोसिन कैन एज रिसेप्टर इज अ सल्सरफेस रिसेप्टर इनसाइड वेन एस आउटसाइड टू दिस टायरोसिन कैन एज रिसेप्टर इंसुलिन विल कम एंड बाइंड प्लेटलेट डिराइव ग्रोथ फैक्टर्स विल कम एंड बाइंड बट इन साइड इन साइड द सेल देर इज एंजाइम लिंक्ड एंजाइमेटिक एक्टिविटी इज देयर दैट इज अ टायरोसिन कैन एज इज देयर सो टायरोसिन कैन एज रिसेप्टर इज एन एंजाइम लिंक्ड रिसेप्टर यूज्ड बाय हार्मोन्स लाइक इंसुलिन and growth factors like platelet derived growth factor serine kinase receptors are usually involved in reproductive activity uh, utilized by which type of hormones activin involved in production of fsh and anti mullerian hormone the last group of receptors are janus kinase receptors now the, whenever you activate the janus kinase receptors inside the cell stat pathway is going to be activated now this janus kinase receptors are activated by which type of are used by which type of hormones growth hormone prolactin and erythropoietin remember erythropoietin is used for production of rbcs okay now see for example whenever this janus kinase receptors okay whenever this jack stat pathway is abnormally activated okay because of the gain of mutations it's abnormally activating now if it is abnormally activated will rbc production be increased or the rbc production will go down rbc production is going to increase so much because of the excessive activation of the janus kinase pathway or the jack stat pathway so whenever this jack stat pathway is abnormally activated now there is more and more production of rbcs so abnormal number or numerous amount of rbcs are present in the blood so this condition is called as poly means many cythemia many cells are there okay poly cythemia vera okay so polycythemia vera is a condition where there is too many rbcs are present in the cell because of abnormal activation of jack stat pathway okay guys we have discussed all the important types of cell surface receptors g protein coupled receptors and their secondary messengers and we also have seen tyrosine kinase receptors serine kinase receptors and janus kinase receptors and their hormones in the next video let's discuss about intracellular receptors which includes cytoplasmic as well as intranuclear receptors thank you guys